Hey, welcome to Handicap Media Podcast. I've got uh, JP in the house. What's up? Glad to be here. Yeah, I'm going to let uh, JP introduce our guest tonight. All right, all right. Thank you guys for joining us. Tonight we have a special friend of mine joining us, uh, Joshua Brown. Joshua's uh, coming to us tonight from the great city of Dover, Oklahoma. One of my favorite towns in the state, believe it or not. Uh, so, Josh, welcome. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. Welcome to the Handicap Media Podcast number three. Yeah, we're and glad to have you. Thanks for coming, man. Seriously. I, I was honored to uh, get the call. Yeah. We want to um, hear about your life and what you have going on. And uh, if, you, if you want to, just kind of tell us a little bit about you. Well, I, I got a question, though, before we start that. Sure. So this guy's a mechanic, is that right? I do a little bit of everything. I, I've yeah, he, I've always dabbled with mechanics since I was a kid. So, yeah, he's so. so just kind of met with your hands, good with your hands. Oh, absolutely. Not, not not quite as well with my feet. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so good tell us you. a little bit about like as far as what kind of things have you done? Do you work on vehicles, for example? Oh yeah, I'll pull out motors, transmissions. I'll completely go through them and uh, set up my gears in my truck. Awesome. <laughs> so oh. awesome. He he pulls up tonight, and I'm I bring the camera out. We're not vlogging tonight, but um, I always got the camera here, and so right. JP's like, "You got to get him! You got to get him getting out of the truck tonight." <laughs> oh yeah. So true. he pulls up in this badass, yeah, black GMC. I don't mess that up. It's GMC, right? Right. Yeah. America, America. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's a beautiful truck, and wheels and tires. So, well, JP, you want to? Sure. We will. Uh, but really, what I, I will get to your, I want to talk about your story and disability story, but, but, but if we could run with this for a second, how did you get um, interested in the, in mechanics, working on cars, and, and, and uh, you also, you're also a welder, right? Are you a welder? Uh, so to speak. I own a welder, and I, and I use it. <laughs> Do you ever, uh, when you're... When you're uh, Picking up parts or, or um, you know, uh, picking up welding supplies. You, have you ever got some funny looks from people? They're like, <laughs> oddly enough, not not quite so much. Good, good. good. You know, they don't. They're not really sure why I'm in there. I guess, but uh, <laughs> they. That, it's not really much of a big deal. They just uh, give me what I need and I head out. Awesome, awesome. Well, tell us again a little bit about where you're from and and. Uh, Growing up and, and uh, how you um, started your disability journey. You want to tell that story for us? Well, uh, where should I start? Growing up or at the at the disability? Let's start growing up. Let's tell us where you're from. I mentioned Dover, but we're going to it a little further if you don't mind. Well, yeah. Born in Kingfisher, raised in Dover. Been there my whole life. Uh, growing up, you know, just lived out in the country, sandy areas, you know. And uh, my dad always had junk cars laying around his property and uh whenever it got old enough to where i was gonna drive i just kind of went out there and started tinkering one if i can get it running i'd drive it and driving age out there is what <laughs> nine ten <laughs> yeah i started eight. around nine yeah, <laughs> pretty much. started out on the farm driving the tractors and then got over into the vehicles following grandpa around down the highways and whatnot right right cool. so i guess you could say that your mechanical background probably came from doing that as a child. Then. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, I remember the first thing I worked on was my mom's Buick. I put a drive shaft in it when I was probably seven. Oh, really? Yeah. My yeah. kid wouldn't know, it, wouldn't know anything about any of that. Stuff. No, my dad pretty much told me what to do, and I did it. That's cool. And he just double-checked my bolts when I got done. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that that was pretty well where it took off, I guess, and. You know, if I wanted something to drive, I had to get my butt out there and fix it. Just figured it out, basically. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. I mean, nobody really taught me. Uh, you know, I'd just kind of check on stuff and ask questions as I needed it. But I just tinkered with stuff until I figured out how it worked. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, as far as your disability goes, tell us about your disability. What, what is your disability and uh, kind of that story? Huh? Well, I just uh, paralysis at T4, T5 vertebrae. Okay. So basically where my chest and stomach come together from there down is uh, paralysis. Uh, I have gained a little bit of stomach muscle movement throughout the years and uh, some sensation like I can rub my left foot and it 
feels phenomenal. My right one, not quite so much. Okay. Uh, how? Uh, when so, did when did that happen? Or, no, I was yeah. going to ask him uh, real quick before you jump there. Uh, yeah. So you're um, you're an incomplete spinal cord. Is that? Am I saying that correct? Well, it, it was damaged. It wasn't severed. Okay. Okay. So you were just damaged with uh, with your accident, and it wasn't severed at all the way through. Then. Correct. The the best that they was checking. You know, I don't really know how well they dove into it, and they didn't inject me with a bunch of stuff to really yeah. see. It was gotcha. Gotcha. We didn't exactly have great insurance. No, so. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Right, right. Where, what, what happened as far as the uh, injury? Well, I was uh, at my neighbor's property riding a three-wheeler, and uh, I took off down, heading towards his driveway, and I turned, and the three-wheeler flipped, and I went off a culvert right there under his driveway, and the, uh, that was uh, April 25th of 2000, the day before I turned 16. Wow. So uh, pretty pretty easy to remember the day sure sure but uh yes for only time i've ever broke a bone in my life and uh i did i broke t4 t5 vertebrae i fractured a t11 and t12 i got my right shoulder blade my collarbone and then two ribs on the right side uh-huh. and uh yeah it just they came out there got me with an ambulance and that the rest of that day was a complete blur right do, do you remember the accident happening to oh, me? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I yeah. remember every bit of I remember seeing the ground coming at me and, you know, the, the whole thing. Uh, I, the next day in, in a ICU, the doctor comes in there to tell me my prognosis, and, you know, he, he just looks at me, and I say, I, yeah, I know. He's trying to tell, explain to me, you know, that I was paralyzed, and well, obviously I already knew. You could feel, right? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, it's just one more thing to figure out, really. Is uh, have you been around anybody with a spinal cord injury before? Well, no, nope. that's pretty much the first time. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Did you? Did they take you to OKC? Yeah. I uh, well, uh, we went to uh, the hospital in Enid, uh, St. Mary's, I believe it was. Yes. And then uh, from there, spent I don't know four weeks or so in there, and then went over to uh, Jim Thorpe Rehabilitation in Oklahoma City. Yeah. And spent another month there, or however long it was. So you're 16 at the time. Yes. You already had your driver's license at that time? I had my permit and my motorcycle endorsement, but no actual driver's license because I wasn't 16 until the day of, or the next day that I wrecked. Yeah, that's crazy. So you, had you been around ATVs and all that stuff your whole life? or? Oh, yeah. I always went out and rode my grandpa's and, you know, I tinkered with those if I needed to. It was second nature. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Never thought about it. I mean, I knew the dangers and this and that, but. You know, I was a kid. Yeah. It didn't matter. You're 16. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> 16. Us guys I, mean, I, do. I still ride today. I mean, I've got a Polaris 400 I hop up on. I actually just rode it uh, a couple of miles down to my cousin's house last night. So what, did you have to alter anything for that to, to function? No. I uh, I bought a rack to put on the back of it. Okay. I just uh, hop myself up on it and then throw my chair on the back and strap it with a bungee strap and head out. That's awesome. Yeah. So, that's very cool. It's been very one, handy. One of the neatest things about disability, you hear me talk a lot about how you know, but there's ways to look at acquiring a disability, but I think it really, for me, it opened up my ingenuity. You know, it yeah, really, it really. You got to be more creative. Makes me a problem solver, and I, yes. I see the same thing with you. So when you uh, got through Jim Thorpe, when you went through the rehab, and you were ready to return to school, or how did that go? What what happened? Did you return? I don't. I don't well, it was at the end of the school year, being in April, so a yeah. uh, teacher came in, and we finished up there at the hospital. Cool. So I didn't have to come back in until the next year, and, you know, I adapted really well. When I was actually in Jim Thorpe, they ran out of stuff for me to do, so the uh, therapist would actually just set up cones in the hallway, and I'd have to go up on two wheels and go down the hallway forward and then do it again backwards on a wheelie the whole time. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> she was just Very kind of making cool. stuff up as we went because right. I was just nailing everything. So I like I, it. The adaptation was pretty easy. So, how, but how was your attitude at that time? When, oh, I was just, just like I am now. Like, you? I, I, you know, I, there's nothing. I'm not going to sit there and beat myself up. You can't just sit there and pout about your situation. You got to just adapt and move on. Yeah, I love it. See, that's what I love. It. I love yeah, it me too, too man. That, J- JP was like, "This is the guy you got to meet because he's just he, you know, he just keeps going." Yeah, well, I mean, the next day in the hospital, I was, you know, I was just like, "Okay, well, I guess we'll see where we go from here." You know, just figure it out. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. There's, there's. It's just a waste of energy to, to complain. Right. It's, right. it's not going to get you anywhere. No, it doesn't. No. Yeah, and you, uh, after, uh, what was your first vehicle that you drove? After the wreck? Yeah. Uh, I had a... Well, eight- remember, he was driving at nine, 
So, right, so, right. I so, mean, yeah. after, after you uh, join, because I actually had uh, a pickup that was a, a '69 F100 that I had fixed or had gotten running that I was going to drive. And then after my wreck, that was out because you know that's almost impossible to get in and out of that thing with a chair. Right. Those seats don't lean back at all. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Regular cab. Uh, I actually bought a '89 Camaro off my uncle. And was driving that, and it was just an old beater. It, it was terrible, but it, <laughs> it got me around, and it was you know got me out of the house and had things to do. So. Did you have hand controls yet to put in there? Yeah, uh, yeah. Newbie Vance did that there in Guthrie. They put them in for me, yeah. and I just tossed my chair either in the front seat or the back seat. Could you even put it in the old car? Do you know? Did you check on that at all? If I that, probably could, but getting the chair in and out of the regular cab would be just, pain. Yeah, yeah. yeah, not enough room in there. Yeah, yeah. Did you run and in? No power steering. None of that jazz in there. So. Right, right, <laughs> right. Did you have any? Um, were you in like uh, ag? Were you in ag? Oh yeah, we had uh, Mr. Yeah. Burr. Yeah. Did friend. you have any? Um, was there any apprehension with the teachers and stuff on when, he, as far as doing any of the activities or things of that nature? Uh, not so much. He he was kind of reluctant to have me welding because we didn't have anything to drape over my legs. It was you know starting off. We both kind of knew at it. Didn't know. Yeah, it, I'd obviously set myself on fire, which I've done a time or two. And, uh, <laughs> so party, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I mean, the biggest deal there was just getting from the ag room to the ag shop, which, as you know, you have to leave outside the cafeteria, go around, and come in through the ag building at a sure, different area. Sure. Which sure. Uh, that wasn't really that big of a deal, right? Right. So when you were, if I could, if I could skip around a little bit, when you were in Jim Thorpe Rehab. Did you uh, interact with other people in similar uh, situations at all? Yeah, there was actually a uh, a girl a couple years younger than me that had just that was there had her wreck and uh, she was uh, paralyzed right around her neck. She was in an electric wheelchair. She had very minimal movement in her hands. And did uh, did did you? Uh, I know you took this head on. Were any of the, of your peers um, surprised? Were they like, "How how are you so positive?" Or did you run into any of that at all? Well, I don't I don't know that they, they never really uh, said that straightforward. If they did, I just don't remember. Yeah, uh, it's you know, always interesting to me how uh, important it is to 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 turn something into positive. And I think it's a strength of mine, and I certainly think it's a strength of yours. And so when I'm when I'm Counseling or interacting with someone who is in a chair and is very negative about it, I always kind of try to stoke that fire. So I wonder if you uh, you ran into anyone that uh, maybe you influenced. Maybe well, you. Uh, if I did, it'd be online. I don't get out quite as often as I'd like to. I have been more lately, but uh, yeah. I, I've ran across some people, you know, just on Facebook or wherever, and you know that they would just be complaining about their situation. Right. And I'm just sitting there bragging about my situation. You know, like I'm in the same boat and I'm making it work. So we, talk, we talk a lot about what we like to call learned helplessness. And this concept of uh, where people, they, they get so reliant on assistance and things of that nature that they're actually almost addicted to a helpless mindset. Absolutely. Like it's, you, a, it's almost a disease, absolutely. practically. You want to talk about that? How did you... Uh, what are your thoughts on not the backpack to last week podcast, but I want to get a, a, an idea of where you are as far as uh, what do you look at as far as government programs, things of that nature, and how, do you think they're a help or a hindrance? And, and, and what do you, what do you think uh, people who are in our situation should be doing that they may not be doing? What they should be doing? Yeah. I mean, just, uh, well, I don't know. I mean, everybody's, everybody's situation is going to be different, but. Uh, you know, obviously these these programs they help a lot, but they're obviously, as we all know, they're also abused. Yeah. Uh, there's I don't I don't know that there's ever going to be a way to uh, to prevent that. I don't know that there is either. But what what we're I trying think, to what we're trying to do, and, and I know and I know it's something you believe in is helping people find that drive. Yeah. That, you know. They, well, yeah, we need they need to be. Uh, more apt to the to knowing that they don't have to be helpless you know you don't have to sit there and have somebody do something for you you, you can just get up and try you'll figure it out right right you, know, you just got to apply yourself and everybody's capable of that yeah I mean, you're gonna fall 
I mean, it's just going to happen. It, well, yeah, you're going to have your downtimes. Yeah. Just, I only fall on Wednesdays. Yeah. <laughs> Every <laughs> other Wednesday. <laughs> it's true, though. I mean, it, I think that's the hard part is I, I've seen a lot of – spinal cord injury is kind of where I started in my world as far as being in the medical field, just to give you a little background. So, And that's some people who I would say inspire me. So stories like yours just inspire me because when I start thinking about what I'm able to do and I start getting down about something – and I'm like, I really don't have any reason to be down. Oh, yeah, myself included. Yeah, you know, no, I, that's a great attitude. I love it. Man. I mean, you yeah, can't, I, I like you know, just watch some old documentaries. Look at how things used to be. Oh yeah, right. We could you, you know, a wheelchair you know, now compared to one then. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You could. You, I mean, if we there's no reason. One. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, there's no reason now that you can't get up and and try and apply yourself and, and figure stuff out. That's right. What are some of the things? Like, let me just say, do you get as frustrated with me now? As far as I, I get so frustrated, Josh, at the amount of people with handicap parking permits. Have you, <laughs> does that not drive you nuts, man? I mean, it's, shit. It, it's, there, it's like they hand them out like Skittles. <laughs> it's, it's so easy to get one, it seems. I know. It's like uh, you go to Walmart, and like every spot taken, you're like, holy crap, it's a wheelchair convention in there. Yeah. Well, <laughs> lately I've been trying myself to just park at the back because I need the exercise anyway. And then that leaves it open for people who uh, who, who needed a little bit more than and I And that's the mindset Man. we're talking about right well, there. Well, it's a mindset when you got out of the car tonight and you said, uh, uh, we were talking about, J- JP was talking about your chair. We were talking about your wheels. And you're like, it's time for new wheels. And then you're like, no, no, it's probably time for a new chair. And then you guys just start talking about that you're going toward trying to get one. But right. you're like, I don't mind waiting so that uh, somebody else who really needs it can get yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, I can fix this. I can, I, I can make it work. I, I, I love it. That's both, just... both wheels are bent. You know, the seat's falling through. The wheel locks don't work. But I, I can find find a way to fix the wheel locks. I, I've actually got another uh, platform at the house. I was going to cut it down and drill new holes in it. I make... And uh, make a new uh, seat platform for this one. That's crazy. Man. Unbelievable. It I love is. it. I it's love it. And another thing I've heard you speak about that I enjoyed your commentary on is you. we talked once about how baffling it was to you the way that medicare charges like for, for catheter supplies remember and the, you want to speak on how how i don't abs- know i don't yeah. know if it's so much the way medicare but uh, the way the companies that sell them right go on, go on. It, it, it's extremely expensive i mean you're looking i reuse catheters just because it saves me money you're not supposed to but i hear a lot of people do that Uh, well you kind of have to yeah i mean you're looking if you if you don't have insurance you're looking at around fifteen hundred dollars a month just in catheters oh wow i mean it's a lot Uh, how often do you have to change the cath well i change mine i I go through about two a day okay so you're supposed to change it every single time gotcha every time you go you should swap it out with a new one i just kind of rinse them out with some soap or rinse them out with water and throw them back in the case and uh I think, uh, you know, they've got some that have just a little bit of curvature on the end that are, it was $1,000 for just, uh, I think, 150 of them. But what, what is it What is it made of? It's just plastic. It's just a plastic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is crazy. This yeah. It's crazy. Like, uh, I mean, well, right now, the, the place I get mine through, the company that owns them is the company that builds them. And then uh, the copay is, for me, is $75 a month. And then on top of what they charge uh, Medicare or Medicaid, whatever it is I'm on. Medicare. Medicare. And then, uh, you know, so they're paying 150 200 bucks or whatever it is for each one. And then plus I pay 75 on top of that. And you know it doesn't cost them more than a couple cents a piece to make. You know, everything in the medical field is like that. It, absolutely. It's well, scary which is, about it. Which is ridiculous because it should be like that for hospitals. They've got a lot of overhead. they got lights they got to go. they got people they got to pay. Supplies is not necessarily that same situation. I can see that makes sense. So, and that that's my complaint on that is the whole medical field is that way, even though they don't really necessarily have all that overhead. Yeah. There's no reason to be charging that much. Yeah, yeah, it's just a it's like a mail order, basically, right? Yeah, they just ship it in. It actually ships out of Oklahoma City, so that made it convenient. It just comes right to you. I used to get them through my pharmacy, but you know this was just a lot easier this way. Yeah. Like, right, right. Just, and even doing the copay, it's still cheaper than me going out and buying them straight out. Right, right. But, I mean, they, they should cost less than what the copay is. So if you're drinking beer, do you have to change it more often? 
Not the catheter itself. You just have to go more often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of you, you should, but I mean, because when you're drinking, I mean, you, you're, you'll go through three or four of an hour at, at the minimum. You can't. You could, right? Absolutely. Right? Yeah. 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 One every one every fifteen minutes or so. No, no. Well, listen, I've got. I, I go to the bathroom. While JP gives me. Man, this guy. <laughs> Golly. <laughs> He says I go to the bathroom every five minutes, you know, yeah. or, or when we go drinking. Yeah. Minutes. Well, see, I try to cut back. I, 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 I've, I'll have one beer maybe if I go out. And uh, I, 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 there was one time when I go out to the bar pretty often, and have quite a few, but you know, I've cut way back because uh, people try to say that that beer uh, it flushes out your kidneys, but all, all. All that is is you're going more often, so there's a constant flow. Yeah, you're not really flushing. But that. you're you're increasing the toxicity levels in your yeah. kidneys. Can you tell a difference? From, from doing that have you noticed a difference cutting back on it um not quite so much if i drink a pop you can tell can you really absolutely so you had to cut all pops out pretty much well i didn't have to but i did yeah uh you know i had a kidney stone uh several years ago that you know it uh was in my entire kidney it was the size of a baseball <laughs> are you serious Hold yeah well it was the, the it, it was in the entire main chamber and then there's several smaller chambers around the kidney or well, you know, within the kidney and the edges, and uh, each of those were blocked, and it was actually eating away at the kidney, uh, at the meat, and I had to go have that removed. So, uh, did you feel it? I mean, how how did you become aware of that kidney stone? Actually, I became aware. I, I was actually working on my truck, laying across the the front of it, working on the engine, and uh, started getting real bad stomach cramps, and uh, turned out I had, which I thought thought it was just me leaning across there for a while, but it. They, they wouldn't stop. So I went to the doctor and it turned out I had gallstones. And whenever we got checked out for the gallstones, they found out I had kidney stones. So it just kind of... Just snowballed. Yeah. It, well, it's just, if I hadn't got the gallstones, I probably would have never known. You're lucky to do that. Then. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's... If we have... Honestly, one thing that we're trying to do here, Josh, as you'll know, is we're trying to bring an awareness to people and let people know that, you know, things... This is real life it's real life and what one thing is is a lot of people when we talk about all of the spinal cord you're telling earlier you're basically from about ch- quite to your chest or just below your chest uh right there right at the bone right at the bone right at the bone there okay so right at the v basically right that. and then down it, you don't have movement but you have some feeling just sensation just sensation it's like tingling and stuff so a lot of the listeners have that are, I promise you, a lot of the people that are listening to this, um, because we're throwing it out there and I'm putting it into groups of right. people that I have that have no clue. Right. Well, I read, like when I was putting my shoes on earlier today, I backed up and ran over my foot. I didn't even know it. I could tell my foot had moved over there, but I ran right over it. Didn't, you didn't know. Didn't feel a thing. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, trying to explain that to for people to understand, I don't know if you can put that into any words because what happens that I see a lot of is it just becomes a dead weight, like your legs or any of that stuff. Absolutely. Completely dead weight. Well, it used to be more so uh, right after my accident. I've gained a lot of the tingling and stuff. So basically it's like whenever your arm or something falls asleep, all the tingling you got, it's basically like that. I mean, you know, if you sleep on your arm wrong and you can't move it right. and it's tingling, that's... Do you have that sensation a lot? Oh, the tingling? Oh, yeah, right now my, my left foot's doing it. And I can feel it like on my thigh if I try to, you know, where it touches the seat. Gotcha. So, but when I, you know, first uh, had my accident, the, there was nothing. So, but you'd be, you, you'd have that tingling feeling, but you wouldn't feel if you, you're, the, if you the, poked the, it with a needle or something like that, it. it would be a yeah. thing. Or your tire running right. over your foot right. today. Like right. I could rub my foot and the, the tingle follows, you know, the, 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 the movement. But, Gotcha. The, the skin itself, you can't really feel. So, uh, kind of like when your arm goes to sleep, you start rubbing it, it feels a little different in that spot when you're rubbing it. Right, it but, but it's not the same sensation. It's different. Right. Different and, and, I, and I know that a lot of people with spinal cords have different feelings. Uh, I met a gentleman who hot was cold to him and cold was hot. Yeah, that's always weird. Yeah, it's interesting stuff. So. Yeah, just, I know that, um, like me, Josh, uh, invokes a lot of humor and likes to incorporate humor into his uh his life and i do too and i get I, we i think we both do this for each other but he has had some of the funniest social media posts of all time and i'm i'm trying to kind of peruse your page right now <laughs> but to remember some of those but man i gotta tell you 
the art of making the, as I call them, tabs, temporarily able-bodied, the art of making the temporarily able-bodied uncomfortable with jokes is something that you are skilled at. Well, I have no filter. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, uh, I, don't, I don't really care if you're offended by what I say or anything like that. It's not my problem. Right. And that, that's one of the things I think that makes you uh, really cool <laughs> in my book is because uh, I like to make people laugh and realize that we can laugh so they can laugh. You know? Yeah, yeah. well, it, what else are you going to do? That's, what, that's how I, mean, I see it. I mean, we just need them to be aware that, hey, they should be jealous of the fact that our shoes look so damn good. <laughs> well, <laughs> these shoes I hardly ever wear. You should see my regulars. They're covered in grease and they're uh, uh, out. They got holes in them from dropping stuff on them when I'm oh, yeah. cutting torch and welder. Do, do you put a, do you put a, a still toad on or anything? No. I, I've got a pair of boots. I just hardly wear them when I'm down at the shop. I just throw my shoes on. Just go. Yeah. Yeah. I need to more. You probably should. When I'm when I'm working on with the cutting torch and stuff, I right. probably ought to wear my boots a little bit. Do you more. throw an apron on or anything? No. Nah, just, you whatever just go I got on. It. You just go after it. I, I just st- try to stick away from me a little bit. Yeah. Or go to the side or something. Yeah, I'll just lean off to the side. Like I put I rebuilt my car trailer and just worked on the side or just hop over onto it and lay across it. So did you have to do obviously you had to adapt your vehicle to drive. Yeah, which luckily was just hand controls. I didn't have to have any modifications as far as cutting the body, none of that jazz. Yeah, so um, maybe explain to the listeners how you get in and out. I'm going to post a video so they'll have it, but uh, I, I got you getting out. What we'll get you getting in maybe later if it's well, not too dark? But. Uh, well, on this truck here, being a little taller, I've got running boards. He's got a big, tall truck. So I'll just throw one leg in and then uh, scoot across to where my butt is kind of on the edge of the vehicle right next to the seat. And then I'll bring my other leg up to, bring, to have leverage. And then I just grab the steering wheel, pull myself up there, and toss myself right in the seat. I, I talk about that uh, dead weight of your right. of your legs. It's it's really important where you place your legs because if you leave one down, it's a pain in the butt to get up there because it's just dragging you down. Oh I, yeah. I, I equate it to only thing I can equate it to is when uh, I pick up my son, and my little, he's three year old, and he's dead asleep. Oh yeah. yeah. Or if he's throwing a tantrum because if you have a spasm, you know it's it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> good point. Good point. Good point. And you know this is this is a great time to say. That I'm actually learning right now because people in wheelchairs don't have the same disabilities, folks. There's a different, yeah. Like yeah. With me with cerebral palsy, I've got the, uh, you know, I, I can't control, tell my legs and left hand what to do, but I have all that spasticity and tone, you know, that that give what what I ask called Superman strength. Superman strength <laughs> seems like it. But all of the uh, all of the other things, a lot of what Josh told me is something that I've learned about. You know, I'm sure Josh actually goes to the bathroom probably quicker than I do because I have to deal with all that spasticity and everything stiff, you know, my legs and everything. So so I want the listeners to make sure that we're, we're telling you here tonight that the wheelchair does not mean that we all have the same diagnosis. That's right. Right. Yeah. You know, and that's what's so cool about this. Well, see, if, if my injury would have been half an inch higher, I could have lost movement of all my fingers and then... You know, all the stuff that I do yeah. has been a lot more difficult. Yeah. A difference in a pair and a quad is, is significant. Um, it, it, well, and it could just be in the matter of an inch of yep. injury. It could be in, in the matter of you being able to spread your fingers and close them and put right. them back together. Absolutely. Which, which limits you in doing, especially Absolutely. in your mechanical world, would limit you. Oh, yeah. You've got to hold a wrench. Yep. You know, yep. And being able to grip them and, and put a lot of force to tighten stuff up. Absolutely. Well, now, so when you get in, we didn't. We need to finish the truck just so oh, yeah, yeah, go backwards. So well, you I, get in now. How do you do the chair? Because that's what most people. Want. Uh, I just lean my seat back. I'll, I'll reach down there. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be a little different for different people. You know, I got a good system worked out for me that's comfortable. I I, I turn the chair away from me to where I have the back of it. I'll take the uh, inside wheel off, lay it in the back seat. Lean the chair over, take the other wheel off, lay it in the back seat, and then just grab my chair, the back of my chair. And pull it up over me and place it either in the passenger seat or in the back seat, depending on uh, if I'm gonna have a passenger or not. Well, that that so, but those wheels just slide right off. They just slide right out, but just like a ratchet set. Just, you just push a pin, pull it out, pull it out. So right. both wheels pop off there, and then the chairs. And then the back just folds down. Just folds down. Yeah, that's all that happens. It's a rigid frame, so it doesn't fold up. Okay, it just stays solid, and I'll just lay it in the passenger seat. And it goes up and over your lap. Yeah, I just lift it up and over me. Okay. So, you know, you got to make sure you're back far enough. You're not banging the steering wheel or banging the top of the, the door frame. And right. All that. right. Right. So your, your car would matter, the size of that car. Absolutely. Just to get that over your lap. Possibly. Yeah, or if your seat doesn't lean back far enough. 
Gotcha. Yeah, that can that can be. You okay. know, then you'll have to twist it a little bit. You, I mean, I, you can make it work. My Camaro wasn't the greatest, but you know, I, I made that work. And right. Then, right. Yeah. Certain yeah. vehicles you couldn't, but a Camaro would seem tough. Although the big doors the, are big. Oh, the, right. so the, it's got big doors, and the the, right. the seat lays all the way back in those. Oh. Okay. Well, in the, in the in the model I had anyway. Gotcha. Gotcha. So the, that, that the made Gen three. Jason showed me a picture of uh, Josh working on. I don't know what truck that is. is that your old truck, truck? Uh, I, red one. That's Chevy? that's my hot rod. I've got that. It's over at the house. I don't get to drive it quite so often. Okay, yeah. wait a minute. It's a hot rod. Well, yeah, I've built the motor and everything in that. I've there's there's it's there's not a lot left on that that's stock. So, uh, well, tell us what tell us what's in it at least. Uh, well, it started off with a five three. I put a cam in that and then uh, got tired of that. Uh, blew my transmission a few times or swapped that stuff out and then. Uh, just happened to, the, I, I've got lucky where I have a little bit of money coming in and lump sums once in a while. So uh, I've bought parts off to the side to build another motor. And then after I got my house that I'm in now, I finally had a place to work on it that wasn't in sand. <laughs> so uh, I put together a 408 stroker for it with heads and everything and, and swapped out the uh, 5.3 after I broke a lifter. Now do you race it or anything? I, I've been to the track a few times, not, not since I've had the, the, uh, the heads and stuff on this motor. Is it, now, when you say the track, is that like? Uh, down in Noble. Noble. Like okay, so mile. it's a quarter mile. Right. And the quarter mile, you're just racing against yourself. Pretty much. I mean, whoever's next, <laughs> to, you, whoever's next to you, you get to show them up a little bit if you have to. But yeah, right. If it's the right. Like yeah. when I had the 5.3 in there, it was, it was hilarious. Just the Mustangs in the other lane never being anywhere near me. It, in a 5,000 pound track. <laughs> and okay. then you jump out and you get in your wheelchair and roll around. Like, How's this guy doing? Pretty much. How's this guy doing? Yeah. There's a picture of him, and his feet are in the chair. Uh, I think. The feet are well, in the chair. Belly's on. The, well, you could describe it better. Yeah, my belly's can. up over the front, or up above the grill, uh, right above the, the core support, the radiator support. And I'm uh, actually in this one. I'm changing the uh, the valve springs. I had a valve spring break on me. I can't. I and don't. I can't even change. I actually learned later. It's it's a lot easier to remove the grill first because you got a lot more room right there. My knees are just on maybe an inch of bumper. So you need more bumper there. Oh, a lot. So it's really hard yeah. right there because all that weight's pulling you down. Gotcha. It's a lot of pressure on my chest. We will uh, try to get Josh. I'm sure you wouldn't mind if we shared this. Uh, oh, I leave my Facebook page. page. My, my my Facebook page is public. I, I, have, right. I have nothing. That's awesome. in, Cool. Yeah, we yeah, we'll have, have to, sure. we'll share that. Oh, very cool, very cool. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. So, do you get tired sitting in that position? Though? Oh yeah, it, it, it the, the chest, chest and stomach starts hurting real bad it's after a while. Out. Yeah. So uh, uh, that's when I learned. You know, if I, I remove the grill, it gets a lot easier on me. And but no I, other adaptive it, stuff you're doing to it to, to to help you in that situation. No, I that's mean cool. I just climb up there. Climb again. Uh, wait, after I bought my this was back before I bought my four wheeler. I did learn. Uh, I bought me a, a player sportsman. Okay. And uh, which seems like a bad idea, but it's extremely <laughs> helpful. I, I use it all around my yard all the time, and then uh, I'll, I'll back it up to the truck now. Explain what that is, so if somebody doesn't. Know. Uh, it's a utility four wheeler. It's got okay. a big flat spot on the back of it. Okay. So, so put haul your stuff around whatever you're going. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, if I got to clean up the yard, it's a lot easier to move stuff. Makes sense. It's heavy, uh, which is you know you pick up even the the, the lightest thing. It, you're either dropping it a hundred times, or you got to ride up wheelies to get through the yard. Right. Everywhere. Tell Plus, us, I live on a hill, so. Tell us know. about. Um, That's crazy. The way you uh, uh, manicure, the way you mow your lawn. Talk about that. Well, I just use my my ZT or my zero turn lawnmower. I just hop over on that and pull my legs up and hop up in the seat and just drive it around. Is all that hand driven? It's, yeah. Well, yeah. It's a, a zero turn. Just uses the, the levers, levers on each side for the yeah. gas and everything. There. Now, back uh, before I had one of these, I did use a regular. Riding my way. And most over. of those are pedals, though, on the feet, right? Yes. I, I'd mow my grandpa's yard because the place I lived at was just sand and weeds. So there was nothing out there to mow. But how would you do that with the pedals? On? I just used uh, one of those grabbers. Uh, I would just have that on there with me and push on the clutch. <laughs> That's, drive, That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's great. Until it broke. But <laughs> Yeah. Well, which those things aren't real sturdy. No, they're not. <laughs> they else to do that. Yeah, that's a. I mean, that's a. That's the, amazing. Man. The Gator Grabber is pretty strong. So you you change all your own oil. Oh your, yeah, all your own everything. My own transmission, my own gears, my own motor. You know, I pulled that motor out and put another one in you, by myself. That's crazy. Do you have lo? Do you have local folks come by? Have you work on their cars ever? Yeah, actually, I've got some people that are, that are supposed to be bringing me a vehicle pretty soon. But I'm working on my girlfriend's Blazer right now. Her K5 with a big yeah. lift and 35 what, oh, inch tires. What year, what year is that? It's 87. Ugh. 
Those are awesome. Yeah, we've got three of them. Oh, do you? <laughs> yeah, so we actually found a really good deal. Is that on one. for parts or just? One's for parts. It used to be hers that she wrecked it. And uh, whenever we went to, went to buy the one that I'm working on right now, we came across a really good deal on one in Arkansas for $500. That's really nice inside and out, straight body. It has a tiny bit of rust. But, but we was like, well. Doesn't matter for that. We right? better buy it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, the rear end was worth 500 bucks. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. The top. So do you, how do you do, what do you do in hand controls in those situations? I mean, is she going to drive it most of the time? Well, or? this one's hers. Yeah, okay. So she's uh, driving it full time. So, uh, so this one's there's no adaptation in it. You gotcha. Know, I've I've been up in there, you know, basically do it the same way as I do mine, and then she'll just throw my chair in the back. Gotcha. And then uh, the the one that the other one we picked up is going to be mine, and I'm just putting a newer model motors and stuff in it, like an LS instead of the small block Chevy, and uh, I'll just do it the same way I do this one, just put hand controls in it and hop my butt in there. Have you thought about uh, taking your ASC test or anything like that? Or have you? It's crossed my mind um it seems like it'd be kind of a waste really yeah because working on stuff for an employer because i used to be a mechanic uh, in hennessy and it's just not when you're working on stuff for people in that industry you're, you're on a time constraint and i'm not right. exactly all that fast right 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 so so you cut but if you had your own shop you had your own place and you're the head guy i mean then you yeah well uh, which is why i work on stuff uh, you know once in a while out there at my house and yeah, uh, you have a garage out there. Or? Yeah, I've got a shop. It's not huge. It's like uh, I think like thirty by forty or so. It's pretty big. They'll get a yeah. car in there for sure. Oh, you can get a couple in there. Yeah, when right. when it's cleaned out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right. It's you full. mentioned um, um, you graduated high school in two thousand two thousand three is when I graduated. Two thousand three. What did you do after high school, Josh? Uh, I went to college at NOC there in uh, Enid. I was taking business administration. Northern Oklahoma College? Yes, Northern, Northern, Northern Oklahoma College. Uh, ironically, after I think on my second year, I had, to, I had to quit going because my car broke down. And then at the time, I had a uh, S10 Blazer, which, uh, right. which broke down. And being where, living where I lived, I couldn't work on anything out there hardly. So I just kind of had to quit going until I could get those fixed. And But you still had that drive. You knew you were going to do something. So even though you weren't going to school, you, uh, you, you were on Social Security? Yes, and you, but you were um, also looking for work, and you. Well, I ended up finding. Uh, actually, I went through uh, occasional rehab again on that, and uh, got me hooked up with uh, Hertz Car Rental in Oklahoma yeah. City. How long did you work out there, John? I was there for four years. Okay, and, uh, doing um, web support, uh, rental extensions, and everything like that. Yeah, and then stayed there four years, driving back and forth from Dover from to Dover. the city. Yes, that's that was the worst part. Yeah, because you had to go so far. <laughs> it's it's ninety four miles a day. Oh my goodness! So wow, there, wow! So uh, however many miles there. And then and back. from there, you've kind of transitioned to what you're doing now, right? Which is kind of pretty much. I mean, after I worked there, yeah, you know, I got laid off for showing up late too many times. Ironically, <laughs> so well, uh, yeah. <laughs> we could we so could have ran with that. Man. Yeah, Good yeah. Night. And then uh, <laughs> a little while later, I got you know I just I ran across some people, some local guys there, and they got me. Hooked up uh, with a job there in Hennessy, working on at a at a, at a uh, for a mechanic there, and uh, I did that for I think two years. But the problem with that is it's an old facility, so it's not ADA compliant in the slightest. Right. So did you did you think about talking with them, or did you how how what did you think when you thought, man, this place? Could well, be. it's just it, it was just it's it's an old building. Yeah, and you just gotta work around it and that's the way it was for me too growing yeah up i mean i just day. if i had to use the restroom i just went around back outside pissed right and then because the, the doors were probably maybe two and a half feet wide it seemed like maybe maybe <laughs> probably two feet <laughs> yeah and then uh once you got all the vehicles in the shop there's not hardly any room to get through in a chair sure because i mean he's got to get get in as many as he can to work on and get right. out. so so you had to handle, deal with that and by the way we need this done as quick as possible Right. So you got extra stuff that you're dealing with that we're dealing with that uh, maybe the tabs don't even realize that we're dealing with. Yeah. Right. So, well, most of what I did there, I worked on uh, the uh, the owner's stuff a lot of the time. Uh, you know, I worked on his. Uh, he said he had a couple engines in there he needed built. I put those together. I did a couple for customers that you know I work on them inside the or by the by the office, get them built, and then the the other mechanics would take them out and put them in the cars. Cool. So. Cool. So you uh, you mentioned uh, a girlfriend. Uh, Finally, 
Yeah, I, I think I haven't had the pleasure of meeting her, but she seems super cool from what I can tell on Facebook and stuff. You, you want to talk about how how that got started and well, how that's going? Well, I didn't have one for, for the longest time. I just ran across her a couple of years ago. So from 16 to, uh, let's see, when we were, I was uh, 31 when we met. So yeah. I, I was just single the whole time, but I, I, I so never long? ran across anybody that was really all that interested. And, 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 but hey, one thing we have perseverance, folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. never get <laughs> perseverance. Up. So, you've been together now how long? Two years. Two years now. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, and she actually has some familiarity with disability, right? And she, did she, did she ever, did she work in the field? Well, the- she's kind of been like through hardware stuff, but she worked at, uh, oh, at the nursing homes and stuff like that there. Okay, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. She had done something medical or something. And so. then she she was going to school for uh, medical. I can't remember what exactly it was, but so was there a was there a uh, was she totally comfortable from the beginning, or was it kind of like for me? It's always <laughs> like at first the girls like sort of. Well, it it, <laughs> it wasn't what it was. <laughs> she was actually dating a buddy of mine that lived with me. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> so he brought her over one day, and he, he, he was juicy. he was bragging. <laughs> you know, he was bragging about how, uh, how 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 much stuff her and I would have in common, and uh, so he'd bring her over, and you know she'd be going through my movies like, oh my god, I love this and I love that, and we would get to talking about things just randomly. Right. And it just turned out we had an awful lot in common, right? Uh, then, right. Uh, eventually, they uh, they split up, and I kind of jumped in there. <laughs> nice. So, does the guy still live with you? No. He, <laughs> no. Yeah, he, uh, he moved on. <laughs> yeah, he stayed there for a little bit. I mean, he, he kind of knew it was going to happen, I'm sure. But And uh, that's kind of what... Um, he moved out, she moved in. So, when I talk <laughs> about the grocery store incident in that first podcast when I told my story, it's kind of like that, you know? The ladies, they may have, not have a tremendous amount of familiarity, and they may remember being in the grocery store... As a kid and seeing somebody with a disability, so sometimes when guys like Josh and I sit at, sit down, I always like to say sit down when we sit down <laughs> um, and get to talking. That's when we go, wow. They go, wow. We do have a lot of common, and then then the barriers start to fall, yep. and, the, and the young lady will I, kind of look at you in with different eyes. Well, the unknown, uh, the unknown probably scares a lot of people. Well, sure. well, this wasn't even a deal like that. It, she was just there. We, we just happened to be at the same place and doing the same things. Right. So right. it wasn't a deal where we were trying to get to know each other. We you just, just, we just, just knew each just other. And it, yeah, yeah. 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 We yeah just, but she saw you were a quality guy. And basically, yeah. yeah. Is yeah. this like, uh, how serious is this? I mean, yeah, uh, pretty good. It's been two years. Yeah, she lives I mean, with me. So, I mean, she's been living there since uh, a few months after we started dating. Because we had known each other for basically a year before so we actually started dating. Here's, and she didn't hardware? You see? Yeah, she works at Ace Hardware there. In so, uh, here's a big question. You get the hookup now? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, that's great. That's good. You know what? I'd rather go to Ace Hardware personally. Yeah. Because I I get somebody to help me and I can find something. When I go to any of those other places, I'm always lost. Yeah, they usually, everybody there knows where everything is. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, so you have a really nice... Uh, oh, which, which, it's sad because I always, you know, I, I lived there my whole life. And I always forget that there was even an Ace Hardware there. <laughs> Right, I, I, I won't forget now. But so, you, go, you go every time now. So do you send her to work with like a, like a list of shit you need <laughs> every, every once in a while? Yeah. yeah. Hey yeah. babe, pick up three of these. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I do. Most of you probably have to go to the auto parts store though. Oh yeah, absolutely. Or I'll, every once in a while, I have her swing by there, but I'll usually go down there because she's not. If I don't buy it online and have her just pick it up, I, I really ought to go down there and get it myself. Yeah. Have you ever so. met? Um, Earl Smedley out there in Guthrie, the head head mechanic out there for the for the handicap conversion side. No, I've never really been back in the shop area. Really need to. He's a real neat guy. We'll have to go out there sometime and, and um, cause I I think you'd find him really interesting guy. I really in fact Earl back there. I tell you what, this guy is the best. Marcus, Jim, all them guys are great, but Earl. It's super fantastic. But here's the thing with him. He's got like the dirtiest mouth ever. Uh-huh. And Earl knows that. So if he's listening, you know it. So they try well, to 
put him on the mic, but let me tell you, <laughs> he's figured out more shit with my van over the years than you'd ever want to imagine. So I bet. Well, I mean, I, before I came on this podcast, I was checking with you on uh, the, the dirty mouth part because I've been quite well so far. You've done I, well. I, I don't know how. I don't think you've had one bad. Yeah, well, he told me we talked about that a little I, bit. I've I got like, the worst mouth. Yeah, well, I do too. I, I mean, he, he's seen my Facebook. I did. <laughs> right, right. So it's just one of the things that, that's so cool about this is getting out there and talking about these issues and highlighting success and and and, and victories that we're experiencing. And when I started to think about guests, I thought about you, man, because there's been so many times that uh, I've seen you overcome and I've seen you create things and I've seen you. Uh, uh, you saw I, I, I owned a boat there for a while. Right. Yeah. Right. Talk about your boat. Jeez, I forgot about that. Well, on that, it, you know, it's a big old 19 foot ski boat, you know, V bottom boat. Uh, a buddy of mine and myself actually redid the floor in it at one point in time. But that one there is a little bit harder to get into. It's, it's you know, once it's on the trailer, it's really tall. So yeah, I would yeah. just have my buddies just pick me up, set me up there. We'd leave my chair there, and somebody else would park my truck. And then just come just, back. Just get on the lake. You know, I, if I wanted to get on the tube, which I've only done about once, you know, i just kind of hop off. I, the, as long as I'm wearing my life jacket, you can just hop off, yeah, swim around, yeah, and get right. over on it. Would you guys go out and float somewhere? Like if you're like somewhere like you get in the lake and float a little bit or anything? Uh, once in a while, and yeah. then I just have somebody help me get back in the boat. Yeah, just put a yeah. life jacket on and go. You know, I'm sure if I could have anchored some uh, some supports on there somewhere that I could have grabbed a hold of, but just never got around to it. Yeah, yeah, but still, you you were doing it. Yeah. Do I, you uh, you hunt or fish, Josh? Not so much. Uh, I never was much of a fisher uh, or yeah. a fisherman. Uh, I just finally got me a rifle a couple a year ago or so, and uh, I think I might take up hunting this year now that I have a rifle and a four wheeler to get out in the woods. Right. So. We have this, um, Josh and I have a mutual friend that is a bit of a YouTube sensation, <laughs> and not as much as he wants to be. But, he tries, he tries. But uh, uh, his name is Jerry Mack, and he would love the shout out. So, Jerry <laughs> Mack, if you're listening, uh, you're, wel- you're welcome, my friend. And anyway, this guy that's our buddy, when he first started to get into these, he did Facebook videos, and Josh and I, were probably two of the only people that tried so hard to help him convert to YouTube. Remember that? Well, I was doing a lot of his uploading. <laughs> right, yeah. right. And he, and he would always revert back to Facebook. And um, one of the things that was, was neat was he did a, and you may have seen this, Ash, he did a, uh, bar, a bar ditch skiing. Video. Bar ski. No, I didn't see that. Uh, I'll got, go check it out. He's though. done that a couple times. Almost a <laughs> million views. Did he really? On Facebook. Uh, and I wish. He did that on YouTube. Oh, I know. I really wish. Because what he would do is he'd put it on, he'd unveil it on Facebook and then eventually convert it to YouTube. But by then it would kind of pass. You got to link it. So he'd get it. like, you know, 700,000 views on Facebook and then. 40 on YouTube. You know? <laughs> yeah, he did not like that too much. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we get a big kick out of uh, his videos, but, but it was also um, intensive because th- he's a great guy and he lives this. So when he, when he wants you to help him on this, he's he serious. wants some help right away. So He's so, very adamant. <laughs> there's I'll go a check little, him out. Oh, yeah. Look up Jerry Max did. He's a lot funnier when he's not trying quite so hard. Yeah, he. Uh, I'll, I'll link he, him up. He just had a couple hundred thousand on a video of him getting pelted by hail. Oh, I saw that one. Oh, did yeah, you see yeah, that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on like Channel Five. And yeah, stuff. Chan- yeah, yeah. Channel Four or Five. One of those came out, and interviewed him. So yeah. So uh, that's something that Josh and I've tried to help him with a few yeah. times. Well, well, I was going to tell you, you know, one of our missions is to get. I don't know if it's a mission, maybe call it a mission, but it, it's just a, we talk about awareness, but really just to show that there, it can be just normal, you know, that's not normal, but a normal life, you have normal things going on, no yeah. different. You're yeah, just talking yeah. about hobbies you have, you like to race cars, you like to do all this, and I'm sitting here thinking of people that I well, know that do all that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, 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 there's... There's certain limitations, but yeah, you, you can adapt. Well, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen uh, Aaron Frothingham there in uh, California. Nope. He, he, he tours around with the Nitro Circuit. 
And uh, tell us know. what the nitro circuit is. Yeah. Oh well, it's a bunch of crazy guys that do crap. I I wouldn't never do. You know, riding their motorcycles off big jumps and all this. And, they, and the, they, this, is this guy in the chair? Yeah, he's in it. He's. Uh, I think he had. Uh, I want to say cerebral palsy, but I'm not certain. He look him well. Ever since he was yeah. in the little kid, he'd go out to um, out to uh, the skate parks, and uh, he was he actually did a backflip when he was a kid, and he, he's progressed from there. But he he'll go down, you know, a sixty foot ramp on the nitro circuit and uh, make huge jumps. I mean, he'll be in his chair. In his chair. Oh, I mean, wow! He'll 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 jump eighty feet or whatever, and then land it. What's his name do, again, Josh? Do, do two or three backflips. Back Aaron uh, Fotheringham. Okay, we'll have to look him up later. Yeah. Just look up wheelchair backflip. He'll come right up. Maybe come up. Yeah, I thought I would come up on wheelchair backflip. Well, we, <laughs> that was just at one time, I guess. Yeah, we well, didn't get that on video, though. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. Well, so JP was uh, at the mall the other day. You got to tell that story. Oh, it's Saturday at the mall. Yeah. Penn Square Mall. Just don't want to get out of the house. Just rolling around, uh, perusing the mall. And somebody come look at me out of nowhere, a couple. I've got my 10-year-old with me. And they stop me and go, excuse me, are you JP from Handicap Media? And I was like, yes, I am. I said, well, we just absolutely love your podcast. And I was like, yeah, great. Keep listening, you know. Well, I look over to my right, and my son is like, Oh my God, my dad's a YouTube star. Because <laughs> my son loves YouTube. You know, both my kids do. And so the YouTube people are, are gods to them. So I said, Hey, I told you dad was a YouTube sensation. Now you know. Uh, now but, you know. But what, you know, JP Taxi, the first sentence says that's super cool. But the second part is, is that the, the awareness. Of course, we don't know what that person, you know, did for a living or anything. But the reality is, is they had, they can't, they just walked up and talked to him. And, and had an awareness to have a conversation with somebody. And a lot of people, what I see, and you, you can probably tell me from your experience, because you're just an outgoing guy, but a lot of people just steer away from people that are handicapped. Well, I've always been really shy, actually. Oh, have you really? Yeah, you don't I, seem shy at I, all to I, me. I, I normally got to warm up to you a little bit. Yeah. And then it's just, it, you know, it's just floodgates. Gotcha, but, gotcha. Uh, but what? normally I don't go out and try to talk to people. If, I, if I'm out and about, I just take care of my business and I leave. I don't go around. And, then I, people, right. Right. and I'm kind of opposite. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's fucking awesome. It is, yeah. Uh, you know, do you ever get this? By the way, I found Aaron Foth, Fotheringham's wheelchair backflip. We'll put that on our page later. But uh, this frustrates me. Are you ever out with your, your, your woman and uh, people, people uh, make a comment like she's your PCA or something like that? Has it ever, has it ever happened to you? No, I've actually never had that problem. That actually has happened to me I, several times. Or t- you know, assuming that uh, the young lady is a caregiver or something. Uh-huh. Oh, I yeah. always think, man, I got to pay you better, man. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I hope it doesn't come to that because yeah. I'd go broke. Well, they told, um, well, J- JP told me a story about, I don't remember where you were, and you, it'll probably spark your memory, but where they were talking to your uh, wife, uh, and they were talking to her, about oh you. yeah, yeah, and and they didn't realize that she was that she was blonde. Here's the deal: I'm, I'm, um, my wife and I are. Oh, there's been so many times that this happened, but the one I want to tell you about is uh, the story about the cigarette down the back. I didn't hear that one. Okay, my um, wife and I were leaving my office one evening. There's a Walmart market close to my office, and I. Uh, we decided to walk over there and grab a few groceries before we went home, and she smoked, and we were we were rolling over there. Uh, I was rolling. She's walking, and she didn't get her cane out. She's blind. She didn't get her white cane out. She was simply hanging on to the back of my chair, and I was kind of guiding her, you know. Well, she had lit a cigarette, mm-hmm. and uh, the fucking cigarette fell on my back. Let's just get that out there now. <laughs> fucking cigarette down the back. Okay, so... She's panicking. I dropped my cigarette on your back. And the, the good news is I didn't feel anything burning yet. So I thought, <laughs> let's stay calm. Was it smoking? Do you know? She I don't know. She couldn't tell you, though. She couldn't tell you. So we go into Walmart, and I've been in this Walmart a thousand times, right? We get into Walmart there, and I go to the pharmacy because nobody was at the counter. Pharmacist named Greg. Shout out to Greg, the pharmacist, if you're listening. And I say to Greg, could you please help us? There's a cigarette that's falling down my back. 
he comes around to my chair and he says to my wife, because you never speak directly to the guy in a wheelchair because you might catch it. You don't want to catch it, folks. Uh, he says to my wife, it's right there. <laughs> and my wife says, I can't see it. <laughs> and then the pharmacist Greg a little bit louder. It's right there. <laughs> to which my wife responds a little bit louder. I can't see it. <laughs> and he says the third time, it's right there. And then my wife responds, I'm blind. <laughs> and then uh, he says, oh, yeah, and he gets it. Luckily, it fell balanced cherry side up. It wasn't burning anything. <laughs> Complete luck. But, folks, let me tell you, what, that's what, did, the it night. Down, did it go down your shirt, though? No, it was, lay, it was laying on the chair. <laughs> oh, man. Perfectly. But, folks, that's the day I learned the difference between I can't see it and I'm blind. <laughs> apparently, the phrase, apparently, the phrase I can't see it means look harder, woman. <laughs> it does. It does usually. <laughs> so uh, so uh, that was quite the night. Also, one time we were in uh, Fort Worth looking for some kind of establishment to drink some beverages one time on a trip. And I kept going up to these people asking for direction. I think this is a story that, that Ad wants me to tell. And I would say, hey, how do you find uh, Joshua's Tavern? And every damn person <laughs> would take in my request and then turn to my wife and give her the directions. <laughs> I'm like, did she say a damn word to you? Is she speaking to you? Because I'm speaking to you. <laughs> So the, yeah, that, well, uh, well, that's that's what this obviously the whole point is. of this is that you know people get nervous. You know, you, you see do. somebody different, and you get nervous. You don't know what to say. You don't, you know, you feel awkward. So you, you try to kind of just dance around the situation. And uh, that's exactly. obviously the whole point of this is you don't have to do that. You know. Well, I, there's just a, I, I've fortunately been around people for a long time that are disabled, and it's just second nature to me, but. For a lot of people, and if you go back and listen to our first podcast talking talking about JP and bringing him around my friends and stuff, and they just didn't know how to act, you know. So it's a different, it's different, it, you know, the awareness, and that's what, what I was going with that story with JP at the mall, is that somebody now came up and talked right. to somebody. That's, that's just a, well, it's a huge step. I yeah. feel like all, all this PC stuff that's going on lately is – we, we just make the situation worse. Absolutely. Worse. Because, that's right. You know, everybody that I'm friends with, I, I've been around them. I'm the least PC person in the group. You know, and I'm saying, oh, you know, well, you know, using Cripple and this and right, that. Right, they they right. learn real quick. Oh, okay. Well, this it's, it's, it's like you that. You can go there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. exactly. Just relax. Right, it's, right. It's not a big deal. I can't walk up those stairs. Say it's Saying something about it's not a big deal. Right. I know. Right. I'm aware. And that's right. You didn't just alert me to that fact. You know? <laughs> oh, my God. What do you mean I can't? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, oh, Have man. you, uh, how many airplanes you been on, Josh? Oh, I've been to Chicago uh, a few times. I you probably don't have a lot of trouble with your, do you have trouble with your chair with the airlines? Well, I, know. I, I was young at the time. This was back uh, probably from 16 to 18 years old or whatever it was, and so at that time, my dad would just carry me on, and then, you know, they would just take my chair from the door and and, and you know load it up on the plane. But uh, if I was traveling by myself, I'm st I would basically just have to get as far as the chair can go, and then hot crawl out basically the uh, rest of the way. I mean, there's yeah. those aisles are so narrow, and uh, oh yeah, which I mean it's to be expected. One, it's it's meant to get a whole one of the, it's meant for all the asses they can get in there but right. that is one of the things that we are trying to bring to light is uh is uh making the convenience level of air travel at least somewhat comparable right. yeah it, it needs to be worked on well it's not just well it's that and it's it's everything you know uh anything that's ada compliant i heard your podcast about that it's just we met these goals and, and right. that's it and then, but and then, and then any, nobody tries out what they just made exactly yeah. or they don't bring anybody in who has a wheelchair exactly. right which i've actually thought about doing and like offering my services you, you know if you're going to build a place oh, and you, you want to check it out i'll come i'll come try it out I, I was i just went to uh kansas uh, last week and uh we, i stayed up in wichita really nice hotel it was uh oh, shout out to best western i guess but they, you know they had all kinds of activities you know they had a real big shower they had a bath bench in there or you know a, a bench that was mounted on the wall at the back of the shower, it was. A I nice, know, man, that was, happened. It was a real big shower, you know, seven foot long shower, and the bench is as far away from the water and the soap as you can get. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, <laughs> but, but they complied. 
So, yeah, it, it meets the it meets the compliance. Yeah, that's, that's what I was but, saying. You mentioned the podcast. Yeah, we get yeah. beat over the head. We get beat over the head with our own our own disability yeah. law. <laughs> well, well, it, it's it's close to the toilet, so you can't get your chair. Well, and there's a wall there. Yeah, so you try to pull your your chair up. You're hitting the wall. You can't turn because you can't go through the side of your chair. There's a wheel right. there. Right. So right. you, you try to get positioned, so you're hitting the wall, you're hitting the toilet, you're oh, hitting the bench. Oh, I've been there so many times. You finally get to the bench, and you need a, a you need your arm to be about three feet longer to get to the <laughs> Right. Oh, so, so frustrating. You know, it, it, it's just things like that. It, just, it meets compliance, but it's not functional. Yeah, so man. I left a big old note, and I said, look, if you put the you. bench in the middle of the shower, make it drop down off the wall so it can be retractable, mm-hmm. and... It, and it'd be fine. And, you know, you've got the shower that's on the hose. You yeah. know, that's compliant. That's really convenient. But when you're that far away from the, Doesn't help from you. where it hooks up, if you drop it, yeah, you got to get back in your chair and then go over there and get it. Yep. So how frustrating. I've been there so many times. You know, speaking of air travel, uh, I actually, for my in my day job, end up traveling quite a bit. And one of my favorite stories is uh, I'm always scared that I'm going to have to piss on the, or worse, <laughs> but at least piss on the airplane. Yeah, that's the and, worst. And uh, uh, what happened the last time I was flying to uh, the East Coast, I always dehydrate myself. Yeah, you told me that. Before yeah. I so fly. Then, yeah, so you can go a long time. And, uh, and, you know. It's crazy. Uh, but finally, one time, I'm on a direct flight to the nation's capital, and um, I, all of a sudden, I had to piss. I mean, and seriously, I had to piss. I tell my wife, she thinks I'm joking, you know, because I joke a lot. So I tap her on the shoulder and I go, hey, I got to take a leak. And she's like, yeah, whatever. I'm like, no, I'm serious. So I call the stewardess. I'm going to call them stewardess. Uh, Was that PC? The flight attendant. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, I call the stewardess over and I say, hey, how much longer on the flight? And she goes, an hour and 45 minutes. And I think, holy shit. (laughs) And then then I realize... That doesn't include the fact that I would get off last. So that's even more of a problem. So like two and a yeah, half Yeah, people hours. don't like the pre-board. You're the first one on. Yeah, but we're the last one off. Exactly <laughs> right. So so I keep, they, I keep an emergency urinal. No, no kidding here. Emergency urinal bottle in my backpack for this situation. I never had to use it. So I think, oh, my God, I'm going to have to use it. So I had my wife retrieve my wheelchair backpack, which was stored in the upper compartment, and we got the urinal out. I look to my left, and I see probably a five- or six-year-old girl. <laughs> oh, no. And I think, oh, God. And next to her is a 20-something-year-old mom. And I said, I said to this young, young mother, I said, ma'am, let me apologize for what's about to happen on this aircraft. Uh, and so my wife, I looked around. I called the stewardess back over, and I said, can I have a blanket? And she said, oh, we, don't, we quit giving blankets in 2006. <laughs> I thought, oh, shit. Uh, and there's, I'm in a bind. Okay? <laughs> so, uh, so then I, I looked at my wife, happened to be wearing a zip-up hoodie. So I tell my wife, babe, get in the aisle, turn towards me, unzip your hoodie, and hold, hold it out to the side. Just flash me, basically. Yeah, really, and then I realized it looked like she was flashing me. <laughs> Luckily, she did have an undershirt on. So but, now, uh, now everybody's looking. So then, <laughs> and I mean, by, then I just go to town. Well, now the whole plane knows. <laughs> and I'm going to town this year, you know, plus my, my, my little friend's like, why are we out? You know, I don't want to be out on the airplane. <laughs> so I, I had that shot going on. But anyway, I, I fill up the damn urinal bottle. And uh, my wife, who's blind, <laughs> says to the stewardess, can I, can I touch your back? And you lead me down the aisle so that I can dump this journal. And the, the steward's like, no way. I'm not getting to do that. So so uh, my, now that you have this blind chick stumbling down the aisle <laughs> with a bottle of piss, folks. A bottle of hot piss going down the aisle of the airplane. Still steaming. Yeah, still steaming. So, uh, so we get to, the, to, to land there in the nation's capital. And uh, people are exiting the plane, you know, while I wait on my my chance to leave. And they come back going, wow, we had no idea. We had no idea that, that you had to go through that to use the bathroom. And I think it raised awareness just in that regard. There's no way you don't have, that you can have no idea. I know, I know. Everybody else gets up and walks down the aisle to piss. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. I'm with you, buddy. I'm with you. I know it's kind of a kind of a, a lame thing to say, but they saw it firsthand. They yeah. definitely saw it firsthand. But if you if you don't see it and you're not around well, it, you just don't know. Yeah, I mean, you have pre board for people in wheelchairs. That's right. Somebody's at some point's got to think. Well, well, we have a bathroom. How do they get there? Well, you're already yeah. in the chair when we get on the plane. So, you know, it's just that they don't, I'm telling you, they just don't think about yeah. it. And, I, I, man, I just, I have nightmares thinking, man, one day I'm going to have to take shit on a damn plane. Exactly. You know, I'll buy stock in a modium before that happens. Oh, you have to. <laughs> that's, that's the biggest concern with, with flying anywhere. I usually just drive these days, but yeah, you know, it'd be cool to, to fly somewhere. Oh, yeah. Far away, I mean, but, that, and that's our point is, we don't have to compromise. I mean, imagine flying out. We of the shouldn't country. have to compromise. You're flying. Well, if you want to go down to Sydney or something, right? You know, that's you're going to piss five, six Sydney, times. Sydney is a great city in Australia, and we can't visit that place because of that. We'd have to piss several times. But, exactly. Yeah, go to the bathroom. There's no way. We just you know. smell up the plane. Right. It's like yeah. uh, man, the sewage problem. It. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got my wife next to me ordering cocktails. I'm like, babe, can you have a little respect here? I'm, I'm, I'm well, cut mouth and you're ordering cocktails <laughs> in this damn yeah. plane. The best situation would probably be uh, the con. They got the condom catheters, but you can use a leg bag. I have thought about that, but I, I'm always afraid it's just going to eventually come off. Or yeah, or, or if you use the ones where. Uh, you apply it and you got to shoot the air in there to swap a bubble. I'm always afraid that I might get it caught and it's going to try to rip out. Yeah, you wouldn't Ooh. know. Oh, you know yeah, that. you'd never know. Yeah, man, you that'd just be a hurt. whole different. I just level hurt math. thinking it's about that. Terrible. Oh, and, and back on we were talking pain. about about the pain situation. You know, uh, I went to uh, Keystone Lake a while back, but back before I bought my four wheeler. So this is why I bought my four wheeler. I was riding my buddies, and uh, it's air cooled, has a fan on it. Well, the fan didn't work or it came unhooked. So we're driving around, riding around in the hills and in the trees where there's no wind, so the four-wheelers oh, are overheating. And you, you can't tell. Oh, I didn't know. Oh. I mean, eventually, uh, you know, my legs would start spazzing more. You know, they kick. and Yeah, you get another symptom comes up from it. Right. Yeah. I mean, right. It's just a spasm, and you can tell. And then I'd, you know, I'd reach down there eventually, and I noticed my calves were real hot. So uh, we finally got out of there, and I got on the boat with some buddies, and uh, I hopped off the boat into the water, and I grabbed my leg to pull my leg back up, and the skin yeah. just... Just pulled right off. Basically, oh, I had second degree burns on both my calves. Oh, oh man! So that's why I actually bought a brand new one for myself. You know, so, to so avoid you that know. situation. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that, that way I didn't have that problem. Did you alter that at all? No, I just uh, it, just it, hopped up on it. It's a, there's no there's nothing there to protect your legs or any of that stuff. You just no. Well, I mean, it's got the, it's factory shielding, but it's liquid cooled. It, it, yeah. it, I don't have to worry about it overheating. Gotcha, gotcha. That's you know. The other one was old and wore out. You know. And it would, possibly. Yeah. Right. You know, if I bought another used one, I'd have to keep it maintained. I just went and bought a brand new and got a loan. And- I, I, knew a, I knew a guy who had a, uh, he's a complete spinal cord. He's a quad. And he was sitting next to the fire. And uh, he got too close and didn't know. Yeah. And uh, had, you know, had burns. He just had no clue whatsoever. Just sitting there baking them. Yeah, my closest situation to that was uh, I, I got the flu one time. My only time I've ever had the flu. And I was in front of my fireplace at the house. And I fell asleep or passed out, whatever. I was leaning forward, and, and that was the only time I've ever gotten a pressure sore on my butt. Was so I, I just woke up and I went to bed and realized I got myself a pressure sore. I was right. just passed out in front you of the just fireplace. Out the wrong yeah. spot, wrong time. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. Fever got too high and I got too tired. And That's said, another thing about the. I don't know if you have this problem too, but those airline seats for muscle spasms. Oh my. God, oh, they're terrible, though. They're, I mean, I just can't get my body in a comfortable yeah, you, position. You would think you could take the seat out and put your cushion in. Yeah, you would think. Well, if you, let me tell you this. <clears throat> if they had any education, you could do it. Because all that's underneath there is basically like a pan. So you could put right. a cushion seat in there, and it would be safer for everybody who flies it that has wheelchair. Yeah. Well, they don't let you put your cushion on top of theirs. Like, just toss it they, I've tried that, but it just... It's never it slides the same. around. Yeah. It slides yeah. around that too. Yeah, it's never yeah. the same. It, it gets out of position, and and, yeah. and then the contours of the seat throw it off. Right, you right. Know. So you know, I've definitely, uh, definitely uh, experienced that. Now, speaking of seating and pressure sores, uh, do you change your cushion often, Josh? Not as often as I should. How how long have you had that cushion going? This I? this cushion here, I've probably had uh, two or three years. Yeah, when it's, you, it's you, wore out. I, I've had. I've bought. Well, this is, I've been in a wheelchair 17 years, uh-huh. and aside from buying a new chair, I, I think this is only this, the first cushion I've bought for this one. Yeah. 
it, but uh, you haven't had pressure sore issues no yeah. I, I move around a lot like you, i can i can I, tell my butt squirming. gets uncomfortable my the, the, you can feel the bone, I should say. Yeah. It kind of gets right. uncomfortable. So I squirm around a lot. When I'm driving, I move around constantly. So that's yeah. a lot of what... I've we, seen you doing your pressure release. Just sitting in yeah, there. you're supposed to lift all the way up, but I just squirm a lot. You squirm a lot. Yeah, yeah so, squirm is good. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I, had a, I had a cushion one time that the, the gel pack in there was just completely busted out. And I was just still going because it's uh, almost $400 for a cushion. Yeah, they're expensive. Yeah. yeah. So. No. Is Medicare is Medicare pretty easy to work with on that? Or oh, they used to be, uh, no. I, I, like the, uh, until this year, I've never had a problem getting a chair or cushion or anything like that. But then this year came around, I wanted a new chair, and uh, I'm on the waiting list. So criteria yeah. has gotten harder. Yeah, well the yeah that 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 good old uh, uh, what the heck is that the, the Obamacare yeah. the uh, Affordable yeah. Care Act yeah. the they, ACA really screwed it all up. Yeah, what they did is they added a lot of layers of yeah uh, red tape yes and so what the red tape did is basically for lack of by lack of t- terminology is, is it scared everybody so the well, regulations it, didn't change a lot in that industry what happened was is the red tape got so thick to get somebody everybody to get, got everybody right. puckered up yeah. exactly uh, well, and it uh, put a lot of businesses out. oh it, it killed the industry i mean there, there's hardly yeah. anybody out there anymore because they just yep. couldn't afford Yep. To stay in business anymore. Yep. They, they had to. They had to uh, do this. They had to do that, and it, it just uh, well, it was this, unnecessary. Yeah, it is the audits and all of that alone. This is why the government has no business in this kind of stuff. This should well, be a private industry. Yeah. So that and I t- and I tell I talk about that quite frequently. You can you can have a controlled substance, narcotic, scheduled to drug, and walk in with a prescription. Walk into the pharmacy with a prescription, and they'll fill it immediately, and you can walk right out. But if you, but if you get need over a wheelchair, you have it takes months upon months to even get yeah. approved. It's so not, frustrating. How backwards is that? So frustrating. And then one of the things that I've been working on, and you've heard this in previous episodes, is now it seems like they want they've been wanting to make it even harder for us to get chairs, have access to chairs. To sit down with experts and design rehab solutions mm-hmm. is getting harder and harder and harder. Absolutely. You know, I had my uh, 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 mechanic guy come out, and we figured out that my motors are about to go out. Uh, and it's just been red tape, red tape, red tape on that. And, it, and it's people don't realize that when we're trying to work, it's not just a matter of working. We've got all these other things. Well, it's just to like tackle. chop my legs it's, off and then expect, expect me to do well, it. Well, we go, right, on, we go right. back on to the unnecessary pricing. Uh, uh, yeah. I had a friend, uh, he's passed away now, but uh, a couple of years ago, a, a buddy of mine that was in a wheelchair, and uh, the front casters, the bearings went out on the casters themselves, mm-hmm. and uh, they, Medicare wanted to charge, or he, he was going to have to take it in to get it fixed because he didn't know how to fix it. And they wanted uh, twelve hundred dollars to fix the bearings and the casters. Yeah, that's ridiculous. And uh, I found out about it, and I told him I was like, "Dude, I can, I can fix that easy." Oh, I went down, I got online, I ordered a couple bearings for. I actually, I ordered a, a whole pack of bearings. Just change the bearings out. Yeah, and it was it was super simple. It's one bolt. Right. You just you you can use a screwdriver, tap them out, tap them in. It's 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 an hour job. Yep. At the most. Right. And then uh, the bearings themselves were seven or eight dollars. It's just the red tape. It's all the red tape, and yeah. it's 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 ridiculous. It's no, what adds the cost it to it. It's crazy. You know, I, I fixed it for, I think, uh, I I ended up doing both casters. So there's four bearings, and then I had to get a couple parts that he had lost whenever he had taken it apart trying to do it himself. And uh, I think it was like sixty bucks. I got it together. Now, you know, if you buy them from the actual supplier, the prices go up exponentially. Oh yeah. Uh, you know. I want to say uh, the bearings on mine, if I try to buy them from them, they're like 70 or 80 bucks. Yep. And I can buy, I can go online and get a two, whole, a two, whole pack, a oh, whole yeah. pack for yeah. $15. Yeah, so, yeah, it's just two or three bucks for, for one bearing. Right. Buy a lot of that ties back, though, to the Medicare pricing. Well, the, the, the structure of the Medicare pricing is part of that problem, but the, the, the flip side of that is the red tape behind it. So if I'll just give you an example. It might be, Somebody who needs a piece of equipment, 
and you go through the red tape of all the paperwork. So it's not right. as simple as it's, like right. It's all that paperwork. That it's all the paperwork. You have it, to go because the bearings you, they don't even make the bearings. Somebody else makes them. That's right. The, the exact same bearings that I buy right online from somewhere else for something else. Yep. And it's it, a red it, tape of all that, and then 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 they put that weight of they're going to denial. It, it just it, the layers. You know what? You tape. know what? I always find funny, guys, is when they tell you to get a doctor's note. Yeah, does, does anybody know less about disability than a damn doctor? <laughs> <laughs> You'll scare the shit out of a doctor going and asking about wheelchairs. Yeah, exactly. Give yeah. me a script for some new wheels. Right. Like, what yeah. are you talking about? Okay. And then he's like, please just tell me what you want. I just need you to leave. I'll write whatever you want. <laughs> Basically, yeah. You can just go in and the doctor's like, okay, here. and Because yeah. he knows you need whatever it is you need. Yeah. He, uh, he acknowledges that, you know, this is not my forte, you know. And that's why it's so cool thing then, about... How old are you, Josh? Thirty-three. Thirty-three. I'm I'm starting to get interested in the whole aging process. Yeah. With disability, you know, and there's really not a lot of data out there. Like, what? I told my doctor about stuff. They're like, yeah, I don't know. That's that's, you know. It's so, it's it's, yeah. it's definitely uh, uh, it's a lot tougher because aging alone is hard. I'm in my forties now. Right. Well, I've got. I'm only 33. I've got arthritis in both shoulders just from being in, this in a wheelchair. Yeah, yeah. You blow them out. Oh, because it's you're, you're, it's going to go out. It's just a matter of when. Right. Yeah. Right. Like I didn't even. I was working on my pickup. I, I had crawled underneath it to change a uh, speed sensor, and I was crawling. You know, getting up, getting down, getting up, getting down. And then all of a sudden, I just had terrible pain in my shoulder. I couldn't. I I, I managed to get up, and that was it. I couldn't. That's I, your I had legs. To, that's your everything. That's everything. Yeah. And I I could barely get myself out of bed after that. So. Lucky, I went and got a cortisone shot, or I went and got a dex rate, found out I had arthritis, and then I went and got a cortisone shot, which I didn't want to do, but I had to. It hurt so bad. Right. And uh, right. I tried to find, you know, me being a problem solver, I looked for alternative solutions. So I went onto Amazon and I found a shoulder brace to pull my shoulders back, help get them into a different position, and that helped. I, I haven't, I've never needed another cortisone shot. My shoulders aren't hurting anymore. That's good. It's awesome. So I, then my left shoulder started doing it. So I, Put it on that side. Kept and that, back. folks, is once again a, a highlight of the silver lining of what, what our listeners might think is ne- a negative occurrence getting this disability, but it actually amplified our problem-solving abilities. Well, I th- I, it could just be me. or I mean, there's lots of people who are like that, but it, it makes you think a lot more about how to, how to do things cheaper than because <laughs> it's so expensive. Being I, have a, yeah, I have a, a shot. I have a PCA and great PCA. Sydney's her name. She's fantastic. But she was laughing one time when she's, I, I forgot she was there once. And I actually, she saw me driving my chair into the wall because I was trying to get my feet positioned correctly on the foot plate. And she, I didn't think about it. She's like, I, I, wow, do, that, I do that too. Wow, that's so cool. <laughs> I, you know, she thought that was so cool that I was using the wall to, Kind of knock my feet that. Yeah. in the yeah. right spot, you know, and that's just what we do. Yeah, you know, Josh Cindy does the same thing. So, should we give up? Uh, Josh, you want to give a shout out to your to your shop? Maybe you have want to send some new customers your way? Or, well, I don't. I don't have like a. Uh, it's not like a, a legitimate shop. It's just it's my place, and uh, every right. once in a while people get a hold of me. Uh, and, get you on Facebook? Can reach you on Facebook? Well, they can just they, they can come to my Facebook. Just Joshua Brown. Joshua Brown. Joshua Brown. Look him up. You're looking for a. For a, Dover, a, Oklahoma. A great mechanic what? that'll give you a good deal. Check him out. Maybe he can help you I'll out try. with your car. Well, no. one thing I would like to do, my, if you're open to it, is I'd love to come there and vlog one time of you working on a car and stuff. It's possible. I've got some uh, videos on my Facebook of me uh, climbing up there to yeah, work I'd on them. Love and, to do that. If you're yeah, cool that's that's, that's fine. I got to get get it cleaned up a little bit right now. Yeah, well, I, you know, uh, that's understandable. Yeah, to- don't mind that. totally understandable. And I know you like to go and look at places for accessibility. Maybe you could join us sometime. We can we do some of that. I, yep. I, I, I was watching a couple of those the other day after after you called me, JP. Yeah, and I got on there. And was looking well, if you find a place that you think is cool, like a place that we should be aware of, um, and, and we're not, we don't, we're, there's a lot of negative ones. So, right. so I've, I've actually had people text me like, "This place is blah blah blah." And I was like, "Look, I want to show people where good places. You right. know, let's, right. let's applaud those." Well, well, you need to uh, you need to point out the places that aren't so accessible so that they're aware. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we do that when you're there, right? And we do it with right. Them. We do. We do. But, but like when we went to Fassler, that that's a perfect place to say, "Hey guys, go give these people some business because they're doing great things. Yeah. They did great things. You know, they actually went out and worked on." And them. that's what that's why I mentioned that. Um, Mechanic and the staff out there 
newbie, not that we're sponsored by them or any or no, faster or faster anywhere else. But we'd That's like to you. highlight people that are yeah. are doing great things and that make people with disabilities feel comfortable. And that's a big thing to me. I, I don't like to uh, be, you know, I feel like uh, shit's hard enough without being in a place where I can't feel comfortable. Well, and I can, here's the thing, is if you want me to, and you and you're, you guys will attest to this, if you want me to make a list of all the shitty places, <laughs> that's really a long list, right? Uh, almost everywhere. Yeah, right. So right. so let's highlight what's what's awesome. You know what I mean? Because I think that's the best way. Well, it's the only way because we could go. I mean, everywhere you go, you could tell me somewhere it's like this is crazy. Yeah. This I have that twenty. Well, then you've got people though. I mean, you might have a good accessible bathroom, but then you got people. I've had people literally look right at me and then go use the handicap stall that I'm heading to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when, when the regular stall right next to it's vacant. It's, it's, like, it's like, well, it's you, like, can, you can use that one. I can't. I can't fit through it. It's like, what do you want to do? Do some push-ups in there? Why do you exactly. need that extra yeah. room? I mean, yeah. it, it's nice to have the extra room, but I mean, the other one you can actually get into. I can't. Right. Now, I'm going to admit, if there's wait. nobody else in there and it's full and that's the only one open, that's where I go. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's understandable. It yeah. means the one that's yeah. available. But that's I mean, if you have that's the option. As, option. as yeah. is training his bowels, the only go in handicap stall. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you, you got the leverage in there. Don't get him started on those bathrooms where they, <laughs> when, they, when they make you buy stuff to use bathrooms. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, dude. Let me help find that bathroom. Oh, that's good. Yeah, we. We want to highlight those places because we don't. There's not enough ink pens to make a list of the bad ones. You know, when you spoke about the uh, shower, where mm. it was away from the shower head, I was in Branton, uh, Missouri, a while back, and went in this great lodge there, and it was very accessible. But going there to use the handicap stall, and they had put the commode on one side and the L-shaped bars on the other side. <laughs> it's like who in the hell? That shouldn't even pass. You know, how did that even pass? They have the bars. Yeah. They, yeah, have, they have the bars. Well, they, they, you know, they have standards for your for the uh, ADA, but the reality is, is nobody really checks them. No. no nobody. They, nobody just, they, just, they got a checklist. Yeah, well, yeah, you got bars? It's yeah, okay. literally, a, I'm, I'm, it's a joke. Yeah, it's, I don't ever the ADA, the bars myself, let me just but. say, the ADA is as toothless as a crystal Methodist. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's, uh-huh. it's another government program. It, it oh, works. Bam. Here. There it is. It's, it's yeah. Program. It works yeah. as well as the government. Right, right. And and like I said, I hate to see these laws and these regulations weaponized against us. Hey, I'll put the bars up. You're, yeah. you're out of luck there. You, yeah. tub, you got a tub bench. It's just it's yeah. far away from the showers. I can yeah. Get. They, yeah. They don't. They never have an expert come in and look at that shit. I've been to a couple places that have, that have been just perfect. Like me too. But yeah. That's one. It's yeah. far. It's few and far between. Yeah, yeah. Well, guys, we're gonna have to wrap it up tonight. It's been great. No, it's been fun. We need to, you definitely come back again, I'll, right? I'll gladly come back. There's still plenty to come. Oh man, that's what I'm saying. And you got the right attitude and everything. So, it, you, I mean, you're just fitting right in. So we definitely want to do that again. We just we'll what we need to do is we, need, sure. we need to break the calendar I'll, out. I'll come out with you guys to places if you want. But no, love to. seriously, would you do that? That would be awesome. And, and we'd love to come out there to one of my favorite cities, to over Oklahoma, that's once right. again. And see you uh, working on a vehicle. Maybe you can work on mine. We'll see. So, uh, yeah, let's do it. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Thanks Thanks for for having me, Yeah, it was awesome. Catch you next time.